Greek theolatry, which is our work. The voice was given uh, mainly to women from their 50s to their 60 plus, I would say. The process was creative because uh, it was all about amateur women that were related uh, with the arts and the fact of us coming together created a work uh, that somehow incorporated uh, the voices of everybody participating in the piece. I really, really hope that I can manage to uh, give voice to a group that is not yet represented in society, which is kids and teenagers, because they are not yet adults, but uh, they are a social minority, in fact. And uh, I also hope to give voice to maybe artists and artistic strategies which are not um, within the traditional forms of theatre but more, I don't know, new or interdisciplinary ones. In particular in my work that, that kind of uh, phrase is very important because it's the main team having a voice but giving the voice for me is creating this kind of environment for uh, people to talk and they are listening so in my case I create a um, a work uh, that um, that voice are the privilege so you you're listening a lot of the testimonies of the Latin American migrants so these phrases are very important for me not having a voice but giving voice my opinion is that the company had the chance to tell some stories about memory and its fading which probably is going to be a big deal in the future Alzheimer's syndrome is being called, called a future, the, the, the disease of the future due to the enhancing of the average age. But we also had the chance, a precious and also a sort of responsibility, a precious, precious chance to meet with the people who suffered the Northern Italian flood in May 2023. In that case, <laughs> the artistic work became for us a sort of uh, the urge of documentation of what we were saying. In a way, we tried throughout our work to give voice to people who suffered from uh, memory diseases, memory problems, and also people who saw their memories, concrete memories, mm, their stuff destroyed by the floods. We gave a voice to something that we call performer. Uh, as an ideal of something that is a transmittery agent between the public and the arts, so something that we can connect to, something that we communicate to and to whom the information comes from. In that sense, in the solo we did uh, some kind of a voice of a chemist, artist, uh, artist that uh, wants to heal the world, and the second one was mostly giving the public a voice of uh, what would you do if you would become a performer, which I think also gives a bit of another perspective on what we do. I worked with the communities and the communities um, had their point of view about the subject we were talking about, that we were working on happiness. So uh, they, they had the space and the time to think about their happiness and to uh, I, I just gave them the stage to, to do that. So for this project we travel in all the country of Balkan out of the European Union and we heard a lot of uh, people from NGOs who try to uh, give also voice and uh, exchange voices from different communities. So we really were listening of their testimonies about the world they lived before and how they manage or how they try to bring peace. Um, we also give voice to military in France and in Sardinia, military people who were here uh, during the, the war in Yugoslavia. And uh, yes, other things? And uh, yet yeah, the the show that we did is also is not only about giving voice but also about how it is possible to have a voice uh, right now. So it's also a lot of uh, question about how to escape from traumatic situation in order to find a safe place where you can start to. 
to speak out. So really, it's it's really the, the process just before starting to talk. How to to be in a position, in a sensation that allows you to to talk and and to be heard.